Yeah, David Dread of Steel Pulse, and I'm saying heal to Lion Voice because it's time that the lion have its voice, have its own story. Says I'm stepping out here. Hear me now. Yeah, the lion's voice. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Well, front to us, a son was born and a child was given. I want to ask you a question. Have you got your book? Eilis Selassie's Ethiopia, Volume 1, The Rise of the Peace Warrior King. I've read the book in its entirety, and I must say it's very inspirational, very informative, and very, very historical, right? Then we call him Christopher when he was born, rain fall from the sky. Then we call him Christopher when he was grown in here, planes he fly. They call him Christopher I young break the chain, weep not, don't cry. Them call him Christopher I read the Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Then, born near the city of Harar, the inspiration for Bob Marley's guitar. People crowd him like some big superstar. It no matter if England. Um, ones may know I am an author, so you know I wrote Haile Selassie's Ethiopia, uh, Volume One: The Rise of the Priestly Warrior Kings, about the birth of His Majesty. And one of the reasons that I wanted to uh, do a YouTube channel is because I wanted to have a consistent hub where we could talk about. Um, the book. This is actually one of my proudest achievements. Um, anyone who has tried to write a book will know what I'm talking about. You know, anybody who publishes a book, I'm, I'm putting this book out. I don't just mean writing it down. I mean the editing. I mean formatting all of the things to get to a final product in terms of a book. Last episode we talked about goal setting. His Majesty talking about uh, reaching a goal. You reach on the mountain and then. You look and you see the other vista and you have to just move to it, you know. Take some time. It's a momentary achievement. So same thing with this book. This book was probably 20 years in the making, you know, before it was published. I started the research uh, when I was at Howard University in my college days, just writing down certain information. Um, so this was one of the uh, products and we're going to, this is the first in a seven volume series. Um, you know, big up everyone who's visiting us from I Never Knew TV. We have a lot of new um, Lion Pride on the channel because of the interview I did on, on I Never Knew TV. And one of the clips was, you know, uh, just talking about Haile Selassie putting things into context. And that a lot of that is the purpose of this series. Because a lot of times when people look at the Emperor, it's very in a vacuum they're looking at one aspect so you, you can't see the full glory unless you look at the full scope of the story and then that reveals to you who the character in the stories are and it just so happens that we see when we look at the whole scope you know we put it in this pan-african context it's human context biblical context all of these overlapping contexts that's how we know uh, at least from i myself who Haile Selassie is and you know, Rastafari is very uh, diverse in terms of, or diverse in terms of its view points. So ones may have different sounds. Uh, however, you know, uh, we have been able to write a book that helps to provide some color, some context to what I think is the greatest story of humanity, you know, the life and example of his imperial majesty, Empire the Selassie the first. So I wanted to just go into um chapter 25 here of the book just read a little piece and then i wanted to make this episode just talking about the name leech safari or tefedi uh, which would then become rastafari where you know we, we talk about how this name came about obviously in the book i couldn't go into ras mcconian's head but i wanted to write an epic story you know just like you have Game of Thrones, just like you have Lord of the Rings. You have all these epic fantasy, Star Wars, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You have all of these, you know, comic books. I used to read them thing there as youth. And, 
that allows the imagination to flourish you know i became the reading ras before i became rastafari i was a lover of books as a youth and many people i'm trying to install that in my children and it's rough because of the screen time and these things so we enforce actually you know time where they have to read and enough parents know the struggle that we're having but we used to love to read you know and we would get lost in these worlds so i wanted to paint a whole picture in terms of ethiopia getting into the mind and i and i always pondered to myself from when i was a young rat when you think about the name tafedi or tafari you know as you say in jamaica one to be feared or one to be respected or he who inspires ah you know these are all translations and you say you know to give a baby that name you know obviously the father had a vision for that child or obviously you know the father was in a mindset um and i think it's critical for us to really examine ras mckonnen who he was his mindset because he was unique at the time in ethiopia in terms of uh his vantage point because he had traveled overseas this is a man coming from an ancient society and now he is acting as foreign minister to his cousin who is the lion of judah sitting on the throne you have all of these foreign diplomats that are pouring in after the battle of Adwa, and you notice that they are, they are moving on some technological way where your countrymen are not you know they're wearing shoes we were the bar barefoot warriors then you know but then you find out say yeah sometimes you, you you're barefoot and it's good but sometimes you step on something and you juke your foot and it's an inconvenience so when you have shoe you find out say it's a technological advancement that help out a situation we went too far now i'm outside of my place barefoot trying to ground myself with some some soil and them thing because we have too much shoes but you have to think from Ethiopia time when you look at the ancient pictures, you see the man them is barefoot warrior up until this uh, time, which was 1890s. Um, the majority of warriors were still barefoot, but then you would see Rasmus Cunning wearing some shoes because he had traveled outside again. So it's a it's a rare mind, you know. He was educated because he came up in a noble family, so he had the benefit of. Uh, education and and the value of education which we'll see in future volumes as we write how we homeschool his majesty getting teach different teachers to teach different things Abba Samuel you know uh, uh, Dr. Vitalian from out of the Caribbean you know we're gonna see all of the different um, influences on his majesty we're gonna look at that more closely in future volumes but in this volume we focus on the birth and again what Ross McConnell mindset is so I'm gonna just read the first paragraph from chapter 25 and then we're gonna just reason on it I want to take this month uh, I'm big up the lion pride you know if you subscribe you're part of the lion pride I'm gonna take the month of July and we're gonna go deep into the birth of his Imperial Majesty Emperor Lissalasse the first um, the Rastafari community were uh, around the world were busy planning July 23rd at celebration. So this whole month is really um, just about the glory and the majesty of, of Emperor Eli Selassie, I, what that means to us as Rastafari people. And again, if you have not gotten the book, um, it's very rare that you produce something and 100% of the feed forward is positive. I have gotten literally a hundred percent positive feed for it i'm i'm humble and you know everybody who's reading it now is saying they're waiting for volume two we got a comment just recently so even though the book is not selling at a rapid rate as when it first came out we have one and two people who are finally getting to it they're reading it and so it comes in slow and i and we always know to be fair big up uh dirty bookman bookman express we always reason and said we knew this was going to be a slow burn because a tick book you know we write a tick book um you know I'm, i can get long-winded so you know so when we are right the, the book are going to be thick and we edited it down so it was thicker than this we added things in so 
um, whole heap of thing um, with this book. But I'm going to read chapter 25 just to give you a flavor of, of the writing style and, and the book. And then I, I, we're going to reason about, again, this name and what, what I thought. And then you're going to let me know in the comments um, how you thought or what knowledge you have. So we have some scholars in the comments, same way, who know certain books and certain things. So we are going to have this conversation this month about the birth uh, uh, and the early years of his imperial majesty and Pilate Selassie I. So stay tuned. But this is chapter 25, Rasmus Conan's heir. And I started it with Psalm 89, um, 35 to 37. And, it, and that psalm reads, Once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David, his seed shall endure forever, his throne as the sun before me, it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. So that's Psalm 89. So that's again the covenant unto King David, Ethiopia being the only um, place on the planet that you know that justifies the statement and this is why we said the throne seal now none before none after the the throne of david now again you see we come as rastafari so now the throne of david now lives in the hearts according to the, the christ tradition so around the world you know this throne is now inhabiting the hearts of man so again there's no end to the throne we are hiding the flag you know most of the time a king have to conquer and force people to hide up the flag you know other than those people who are indigenous there you know we see um his majesty reign rastafari spread to the hearts through words on and power people hiding up so that sovereignty you know the kingdom of the most side descending from the heavens you know from the thoughts from the actions and the deeds is being manifest so that psalms um 89 but i just want to read the first paragraph every may rasmo conan traveled with his family to the mountain village of ajerso godo escaping the many diseases that were common within the cramped confines of harar at that time of year there amidst the clouds at approximately 2,780 meters or 9,120.23 feet above sea level, he built a traditional Ethiopian home overlooking the Fertile Valley. The air was thin, clean and crisp and Rasmo Konin could truly enjoy the beauty of the land that he had given his life to serve and defend. In 1892, he traveled to Adgerso Godo early with his pregnant wife, Waziro Yashimabet, and he prayed that the cleaner environment would provide better conditions for childbirth. Rasmo Konin loved Ethiopia as only a warrior who had fought for the land could. Having had the opportunity to travel abroad, he was just as aware as any of his fellow Ethiopians that his land was ancient, that her indigenous culture precious brilliant military strategist he was also well aware that the land was facing a threat greater than ever before his mind was heavy with the burden that his knowledge of the world had given him it was his total love for ethiopia that made places like Jerusalem go to so special to rasmo conin in that setting he was able to clear his mind and strategize in preparation to meet future challenges Tell them bow ledge, the far eye, tell them bow, I miss the last eye when we tell them bow ledge, the far eye, tell them bow, I miss the last eye when we tell them bow ledge, the far eye, tell them bow, I miss the last eye when we tell them bow ledge, the far eye, tell them bow, I miss the last eye. 
the 23rd of July Born in a prophet's name, how far I burn him, God from sky Cause I know the prophecy is true Cause unto us the son was born 1892 We build the OAU, come on break all chains Tell them to far I was his name the same Man is cold as the wrath, it didn't come fast Went from village to the chess match, the chess match Who governed in Harar from, from the, the age of 13 This is you blessed with I writ supreme first king Hear the throne with them queen, hear the trumpet sound Get around, tell the youths them come in village The far eye, tell them bow I the silasi, I let me tell them bow village The far eye, tell them bow I the silasi, I tell them so Fight so many wars Thus to centralize the tribes, no nine to five reigns came when the king arrived. Cause out of the womb of Yashima bet he survived, born wise. Plus he focused on his plan, no joke. Armies await his command. They say a child shall lead the way. When them see how the warriors surround, that's when the people then say, This child destined for the throne. When them see how we govern in Harar, that's when they all bow down. The government on his shoulders Mussolini coming with his plan He's preparing his soldiers But his plan has to fail Weep not The Lion of Judah prevail Hail Lich The far eye Tell him bow I, the Selassie I, the